Our guest today has changed the lives of people across the globe, and he's here with us today on The Real Well Show. I'm Kathy Fedke, and welcome. You're listening to The Real Well Show with Kathy Fedke, the real estate investor's resource. Robert Kiyosaki is a businessman, investor, and best-selling author whose book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, has sold over 32 million copies. The book emphasizes the importance of increasing one's financial literacy, investing in assets, and building wealth. And at the heart of Kiyosaki's philosophy is using debt responsibly as a tool to help build that wealth and buy more assets. I actually had Robert Kiyosaki on The Real Wealth Show almost 20 years ago in 2005. And it was then that he gave me some advice that really launched real wealth and actually launched my investing career. You may remember 2005, that's when people were not using debt responsibly. And of course, the foreclosure happened just a few years later. But when I had Kiyosaki on The Real Wealth Show in 2005, He was able to show me what to look for to help avoid the crisis that was coming. I mean, it's pretty obvious when you look back that people were basically signing liar loans at the time and everybody knew it, but somehow there was a belief that there wouldn't really be an impact. But Kiyosaki showed me exactly when those loans would come due and that that would be in 2007. So it's back Then that he said, sell all your assets in California, Arizona, and Florida, because those are the areas where where home prices had gone up about 40% every year. And he said, look for places where there's population growth, job growth, and affordability. You've got to make sure that the real estate is affordable with real loans to those who want to buy those homes. And he referred me to Texas. I jumped on a plane because I thought, if it's good enough for Robert Kiyosaki, it's good enough for me. And I ended up calling Rich and saying, I want to buy five properties. Now, back then, it was pretty easy to get loans. And we were able to do that. I ended up coming back and talking about it in San Francisco on my radio show back then. um, And we had our phones ringing off the hook with other people who wanted to learn how to invest out of state. And so we shared our resource list, the brokers we were using, the property managers, the renovation teams. And that is when Real Wealth was born, our referral network where we help our members build their real estate portfolios by referring our proven teams at Real Wealth. Before we get started, I want to give a little disclaimer that Kiyosaki does talk a bit about politics. This could trigger you if you don't agree with his opinion. I want to let you know that Kiyosaki's opinion does not necessarily reflect that of Real Wealth, but I do think it's really important to listen to other people's opinions and find out why they think the way they think, even if you don't agree with it. So important. All right. So with that disclaimer, let me bring on Robert Kiyosaki. Robert, welcome to The Real Wealth Show. Well, thank you and congratulations. I understand this is your 1,000th show. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a whole lot of talking and a whole lot of topics. But don't you learn? Don't you learn a lot by teaching? I mean, Absolutely. I mean, that's how I started when I interviewed you almost 20 years ago in San Francisco on the Real Wealth Show. I didn't really know anything about real estate, but I wanted to interview successful, wealthy people to learn their secrets. And it it does make all the difference. And I, I don't remember if it was on that live broadcast. That was a live radio show and they don't give you a lot of time. It might have been in our discussions before or after the interview. I asked you, you know, what are you doing? This was 2005. Like, what are you doing personally with your investments? And that's when everything changed for me. You said, I'm, I'm out of California, sold everything in California in these high tax states. And I, I'm buying in Texas. And I thought, oh my gosh, why? You know, and you said population growth, job growth, and it's still affordable. The numbers made sense. So I jumped on a plane, came back with five properties, all because of you. That's uh, cool. Congratulations. It's fun too, isn't it? It is. It is yeah. really uh, yeah. so fun, so, except there's lots of lessons to be learned along the way, yeah. for sure. But if you don't like learning, you wouldn't be doing it. That's if right. It, if it didn't require learning, everybody would be doing it. And, That's true. Uh, most people are too lazy. They just rather have a 401k. You know? Yeah. Or just, you know, you've been talking about financial intelligence for 
over 20 years now. Are you seeing any improvement on young people learning how to become wealthy or even just be able to take care of themselves? Well, the thing I'm kind of optimistic about is that this YouTube is educating people far more than Wall Street or university systems are educating people. Now, there's good and the bad, you know. There's- yeah. Looking back over the years, you've been investing a long time. And like you said, there's so much to learn. What are some of the big lessons you've learned, kind of maybe harder lessons that if you could go back and do it over again, you would? Well, you know, first of all, um, I hated school, but I like to study. And the thing I like about what I do is I study what I want to study. And there's more and more people coming around to that point of view because my first book before Rich Dad Poor Dad was, if you want to be rich, don't go to school. Um, are you still investing in real estate? Are you- uh, that's a good question. I, I never stop. Uh, if you look at my, my board game, that's a cash flow board game. In the middle there is, a, is the rat race. And most people get stuck in the rat race. They go, go to school, get a job, and get a 401k. You're stuck in that rat race. On the outer track up here is the fast track. And the, the purpose of the cash flow game was to teach you to think about how you get from here to there. So the deals I'm doing now, I mean, I, I still have 1,500 rental units. But wow. the deals I do now are much, much bigger. And that's my point of view I want to talk to your, your audience about is that how, you know, like everybody starts with a one or two bedroom unit, maybe a fourplex, you know. And as my rich dad often said, you don't want to say you went bankrupt on a duplex. And a lot of people do. You know? <laughs> Cause, but that's how you start. You know, you may make mistakes on the small deals and all this. Oh, but most right. people think about, I'm going to have 10 ounces of gold or, you know, maybe a, a rental unit or a fourplex or two Bitcoin. And the reason they get stuck is this is stuck. The brain does not think big enough. So the reason you start with a small deal, if you played the cash flow game, you go to a big deal and then you go fast track. So I'm coming up to the Limitless event by Ken McElroy, my partner. Uh, I think it's in August sometime in Dallas, yep. Texas. End of August. I'll be talking about thinking bigger. But the purpose of the cash flow board game was to t- start small, keep going. But that's, that's big deal and all that stuff. But when you get out here, the world's different again. So you come to Limitless, I'll be talking about how you get out here. And the purpose of my life, and I'm sure yours, let's do bigger deals, more fun. You know, it, it, it's like you said, and I love this about the cash flow game. It does start with just, just get started, oh. you know, buy your first thing. Then you overcome so many of the fears yes. that you had that keep you back. It's um, then you do a little bit bigger. Jumping into something really big before you're ready yeah. can also backfire. We just wrote a book on this called Scaling Smart. Um, you gotta, you, you gotta kind of work your way up or learn your way up, but nothing beats real experience. Yeah. Or, or you just got stuck in that rat race there. Go to school, get a job, save money, buy a house and get a 401k or an IRA. Woo, Tarzan. Man, I tell you, you living dangerously there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is because too, too often people don't sit down to see what it really means for them in 20 or 30 years. Where will they be? And, and what will the tax repercussions be of, of that versus real estate where you uh, can. The, the yeah. reason they don't think bigger is they can't see it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So the point is how big is your brain? That's what I'll be talking about limitless in Dallas uh, in August sometime. But most people think too small, and that's why they don't get ahead. So how do you, what are some of the key ways to expand your mind? Well, it's your friends. Mm. Do you know, if you hang out with losers, you're a loser. <laughs> uh, and I grew up in Hawaii, and my, I love my friends and classmates, but they're all drug dealers. Mm. And, and I, I was a Marine. I went to, I went to the academy. Yeah, that didn't mix. And they all they all laughed at me. And said, oh, who do you think you are, big time? I'm going, I don't do drugs, first of all, and I don't want to hang out with you guys anymore. <laughs> but I left them probably, what, 60 years ago. But they're oh. still stuck 
doing their growing marijuana in the mountains. Yeah, but you're the rich guy, so they're, you're the one they're going to go to. Now, being the but, rich guy... But please hear me. Yeah. If you grow up in a culture of poverty or drugs or abuse, that's who you become. It's only so how do you get out of it? You kind of want to get out. Mm-hmm. So that's why I play the cash flow game. I teach the cash flow. When you teach, you learn more. But uh, what's you going to pay me? How much How much you going to pay me? <laughs> and that's why they don't get ahead because they think like an employee. Go to school, get a job, work hard, save money, invest in a 401k. That's an employee's mindset. That's fine. Most people have it. Mm-hmm. That's what schools teach. I don't teach that. Yeah. At Limitless, where you'll be speaking, uh, people will have the opportunity to surround themselves with extremely successful people and, and build that network. That does make all the difference. So you I, went into I, the- I, I go. I go to it to learn. You know, I go there and I, I do. I do my I think my half hour talk. But I go there to listen to all the, there's so many different speakers. I think Robert Kennedy Jr. is going to be there and all that. So, you know, I go to hear great people or yeah. successful people. I, this is one thing that I've known about you because I've been to different events with you for many years and you do sit in the audience and you do continue to learn and people are always yes. shocked. Like Robert Kiyosaki she probably knows everything by now, but there's always more to learn. <laughs> well, one of the advantages of being stupid is that uh, like I flunked into high school twice. <laughs> I did. I flunked into high school twice because I can't write. And so being stupid is kind of a scar on my soul. And uh, I overachieved from that because I started studying. But I studied what I want to study. Mm. I want to study how to get rich. Most people are studying for job security. Big difference. Or be a doctor or a lawyer, heaven forbid. You know, I just wanted to be an entrepreneur who did big fucking deals. That was it. <laughs> BFD. <laughs> <laughs> what an incredible story that you say you can't write, and yet you wrote the most famous book in the world. You could go to any country and people know who you are. As you know, school is not about learning. It's about being a parrot. You know, say one plus one is, two plus three is, you know, just a parrot. Yeah. And then most academics, like my poor dad, you know, they, they have good memories and they can they teach them a textbook, but not real life. Yeah. So all they've done all their lives is they go to school, get a job, get their pension. And pensions are going broke right now. So there's millions of boomers, because boomers are the first generation with, with non-government pensions. Not non, they're called defined benefit pensions. Boomers are the first people who do, define contribution pensions, the 401k or the IRA. So if you don't put enough money in, you don't have a pension. So the boomers are toast right now. I'm, I hate to say it. We're all in our pushing 70 now, and they don't have any money in their 401k or IRA. Mm. Uh, I don't like to get too much into politics because people get just so fiery over it. But I do. <laughs> I would like to just ask you from your opinion, uh, why tax cuts if trump does get elected and he cuts taxes how does that benefit the economy because so many people on the liberal side say oh you it's only going to benefit the rich what what are your thoughts on that his thing is this if you cut taxes then you have money to grow so his plan is to grow the economy we sold our jobs to china do you know what I mean? So our jobs mm-hmm. are still in China. That's why Trump hates China. So our factories moved to China and Vietnam and all that. So Trump and Vance, J.D. Vance, are going to bring the jobs back. So it's, gonna, you know, it's a 20-year project. But mm-hmm. I'm optimistic because they're going in the right direction. So when they bring the jobs back, it it, it elevates people's lifestyles. So the last four years during the Biden administration, we've had a pretty robust economy. Um, why why do, you th- do you think it's because we still had the tax cuts in place? Or what's the reason for that? No, that robust economy thing is bullshit. What you didn't see was the acceleration of debt. So it's called, in economics, it's called M2, money supply. 
what they did is they pumped, you know, from COVID when they took over and all this, they pumped it into the economy. So we're floating on bigger debts. Our, it's our debt to GDP. If you have a debt to GDP ratio of 90, you're on the verge of bankruptcy. Our debt debt to GDP today is 130. We're bankrupt. Wow. So the only way, the only thing they can either do is cut the spending or increase production. That's true. There, there seems to be more and more requests that the government take care of us versus. And what that's we do. why what you're doing, young lady, is very important work. You keep educating. You're, you're teaching basically capitalism. Hmm. Okay, because you own property. If if Trump is elected, he is going. What? How on earth can he? tackle this debt issue that's the question of a life but that's why i was saying that his his job is the same thing as you were telling me when we we're still off air that when the taxes were getting to you you had to move so that you could produce more and keep more mm-hmm. and when you keep more they can invest more all right robert well it's really really been a pleasure to have you here i look forward to seeing you at limitless Hopefully our listeners can can get out there and see you. It's LimitlessExpo.com, yeah, I think. Rec- I highly recommend it because if you really want to get rich, you do have to think bigger. You have to get smarter, but also think bigger. Too many professors are smarter, but they think small. If that makes yeah. sense to you. Oh, yeah. So that's Limitless, and then I'll be there. I'll be happy to sign books and all of that stuff I like to do. I tell you, the greatest, the greatest joy of my life today is when I'm traveling – and these young men come up there and now they're 25 to 30. And they said, my dad gave me your book. And I go, yes. <laughs> that's, that's how you change the world. Yes. And when people pass ideas along, which Rich Dad Poor Dad is, just ideas. It's capitalism. Well, your book has expanded the minds of, of millions and millions of people. Thank you. Uh, and I'm sure you get uh, that feedback all the time. So I, I know it's changed I, my life. Yeah, I love it. I love it because that's why you do it. You know, I, I have enough money. Like I said, the greatest thing is when somebody, some boy or girl comes up and says, my father gave me your book. That's how we change the world. You're doing the same thing with your podcast. Thank you. All right, Robert Kiyosaki, thank you so much for being here again on thank The Real you. Well Show. Bye-bye. And thank you for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. If you would like to continue to increase your financial intelligence, just go to realwealth.com. You can join for free. You'll get hundreds of free webinars. You can talk with one of our investment counselors to go over your plan. And we can give you referrals to teams across the country who have helped our over 75,000 members build their real estate portfolios. I'm Kathy Fedke. Thanks again for joining me here on The Real Wealth Show. We'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.